I'll be real with you here. I watched zero seconds of this game, but it would be kind of inappropriate, kind of, it wouldn't feel right, you know, to not talk about this, because I had myself an afternoon at 3.45, I watched Spider-Man, and uh, you know what? I'll just say this right here, this Spider-Man super fan is extraordinarily pleased with how that experience went, and then I went to Hot Pot after with the boys, and so I missed out on this game. Just got back, saw the results. While I was snacking down on the hot pot, though, I was just kind of intermittently checking the statistics, you know, going over who was doing things and what the face-offs and the shots were all like for this Canucks and the Sharks game, the very first game of their very small road trip. It's not even a road trip. They just have one game on the road trip, and then they're coming back to Vancouver. Stories of this game, you have yourselves Guillaume Brisebois suiting up in here. Unfortunately, he got injured very early on, so we had ourselves Noah Juleson, who also suited up as well. Tucker Pullman, not playing tonight. However, he did get two negative tests earlier in the afternoon, I believe. So we'll see if he's able to play when the Maple Leafs come in town later this week. So hopefully everybody is healthy and everybody is able to come back in a proper capacity soon. But when it comes to this game against the San Jose Sharks, this one was one that the Vancouver Canucks finally needed to have in their pockets. The recent stretches of wins that the Canucks have had haven't really been against the most important opponents. Boston, not in their division. Winnipeg, not in their division. Carolina, Columbus, same. Only the LA game from a few games ago was actually important, but this one was important too because the San Jose Sharks are kind of above Vancouver in the Pacific Division standings. However, because this is a regulation win for Vancouver, the Canucks are now one point back behind the Sharks with one more game played, and all of a sudden, it's like, okay, the Canucks are four points out of a playoff spot. Edmonton has been losing here and there. They won their first game in a while tonight. So, good for them. But Vancouver is speeding up behind their tails, dude. And it comes off of 66-year-old Bruce Boudreaux's sixth win and the fact that he has become the sixth head coach to start 6-0 and during his start with a brand new team in NHL history. That is just so, so weird. But despite that fact, the Vancouver Canucks went out there and they actually won themselves a game. A lot of the things that we had been seeing from this new team under Brudro have presented themselves tenfold in this one here too. The aggression, the stealings of the puck, the takeaways, they actually had some good offensive rushes. Now again, I didn't watch this, so I'm just kind of building my opinion based off of what other people are saying and what I have been able to stumble across when it comes to statistics and whatnot, but still... The Vancouver Canucks went out there, were outshot in this one 36-30, and in particular, that second period was when things got really bad. 12-5, the shots for the San Jose Sharks in the second period, and the rest of the periods followed through. But when you have yourselves a team that is giving up a whole bunch of shots, what you need to do to win is have yourselves a good goaltender. And that is what Thatcher Demko was, a 9-4-4 save percentage, 34 saves on the night. Aiden Hill, on the other hand, had an 8-6-2. He let in four goals on 29 total shots, which is good enough to get beasted by Thatcher Demko. But let's go over the scoring here in this one. It's Brock Besser who kicks things off 12 minutes into the first period. This one's a goal where Tanner Pearson is a guy who takes the puck down low into the corner. He's trying to get it off on a rebound opportunity. So he follows the puck into the corner, steals it along the boards, throws it across the crease. Besser is there. He grabs it. He holds it. He shoots it up high on Hill. You'd think for a guy who's 6'6", he'd have the top of the net covered a lot better, but unfortunately that was not the case. Brock Besser goes out there with his eighth on the year. Bruce, there it is. It appears that he has actually fixed Brock Prince Charming Besser. Give it a little bit later, and the Vancouver Canucks on the power play send things back to the point. It's Quinn Hughes who goes over to the right, into the middle. Bo Horvat goes up high once again on Aiden Hill. Bo has been absolutely tearing things up. Two straight games where Bo Horvat gets a pretty important goal, assisted by Miller and Hughes. It's almost a super similar play to that Columbus game winner the other night. Hughes goes to Miller on the right, and then Miller with the cross crease cross wing pass over to Horvat, and he absolutely just snipes it. 
Then you have yourselves Timo Meyer with three minutes left in the first period, just a little bit after that Horvat goal, who gives the Sharks their first goal on the night. This one's a pretty unfortunate bounce, and it's not really Thatcher Demko's fault. As Timo Meyer feeds the blue line, it's absolutely ripped to the goal by Eric Carlson, but unfortunately, it takes a big, juicy bounce off a Canuck in front. Over to Timo Meyer, who is there on the side, and he's just kind of got an open net to shoot at. Some of the Canucks try to block it, but it doesn't really work. It's 2-1 at the end of the first period. The second period is where things get a little bit interesting for Vancouver, because as we have noted, this is where the San Jose Sharks started to kind of pour the shots on. 12-5 was the shots during this second period right here. However, Satra Demko stood tall. He saved all 12 San Jose Sharks shots. Meanwhile, the Vancouver Canucks were able to actually score one on the final. This was Aiden Hill sending the puck over to a San Jose Shark who actually had a man on him, which wasn't really all too good of a decision. It's quickly pounced upon there by Tanner Pearson, and it's shoved out in front of Brock Besser, who absolutely finds a nasty angle on this goaltender once again. Pearson and Miller combine for the assist on Besser's second goal of the game. His ninth on the season, man. Brock has actually come out here. He has been fixed by Bruce. He's starting to shoot more. This is what we wanted. Miller going out there getting points. Pearson redeeming himself. That's his second assist on the night for both of these players. So really good to see that. Now, the third period is where things get a little bit frustrating because the Andrew Cogliano goal, six minutes or eight minutes, excuse me, into the frame was kind of uh, Noah Juleson's fault. Like, sorry, I don't want to go out there and pile on a guy, but this was a play where Noah Juleson just gets completely beat out. Andrew Cogliano gets the puck in the neutral zone. He chips it by Juleson, walks right around him, and slips one, I think it was five hole, on Thatcher Demko here. You could see Demko's body language. He doesn't really look like he's expecting that one to come in as fast as it does, which is why he's not able to get the five hole down. It was really surprising to see Juleson get beat in this way, especially considering how well he played in the previous game, where he didn't really notice him all too much, but this was a bad play, not a good one for him. Obviously, we know Juleson hasn't had the most diversified NHL experience because he has been plagued with injuries his entire career and opportunity issues and whatnot, so it's been difficult for him to get extended time in the National Hockey League, but it's moments like that that just kind of show off the experience versus the inexperience right here. Not to say that Andrew Cogliano is a bad player. The guy's one of the fastest guys in the league. It's just he's able to get by him very quickly. JT Miller, though, 10 minutes later, gets himself his 10th on the season to make things 4-2, and secure the victory for Vancouver. This is a great play. Both teams are changing. It gets taken over here in the neutral zone by one JT Miller, who crosses the blue line, comes right in, he shoots it, and he scores. Super simple goal right there. Didn't even try to use his teammates. Just strips the San Jose Shark of the puck and then just decides, okay, I'm just going to come in and do it myself. I'm not even going to skate super fast when I do it. He glided over the blue line into the high slot, and then the Sharks just kind of collapsed inwards. He just shot it, and it went through. Then you have yourselves Elias Pettersson with a minute to go. He actually has himself an empty net to shoot at, but instead of being the guy to get the goal, what does he do? He throws it in front for one Jason Dickinson, who has flubbed so much this season. On the backhand, on the forehand, right in tight, he gets himself his second goal on the season, and first in a very long time. Dickinson does not score often, so... Good to see Petey go out there and give it to Dickey, give him his second on the season. Pedersen is out there with 10 assists this year, so really good to see that. Brock Besser, though, is the guy that everybody is touting as the first star for this one, aside from, of course, Thatcher Demko, but... The two Besser goals, up high, beautiful snipes. This is what we really want to see. This is the locked and loaded Brock coming in here and just sniping things down like he did in his rookie days. Who knew all it took was a coaching change and a change of mindset. Telling the guy, hey, remember when you played against us in Minnesota? You scored a ton. Shoot more, Brock. Are you kidding me? And he goes out there and he does it. Who knew that he actually still has that wrist shot ability somewhere in his repertoire? He busted it out twice tonight, and it's good enough to propel the Vancouver Canucks to a 5-2 victory. You see, the face-offs, the Vancouver Canucks dominated this one 57% to 43%, with Elias Pettersson actually being the top face-off guy on the team. 69%, pretty nice right there. Bo, who was touted as being our guy actually was negative. So he had a 45% winning percentage in this game. Justin Dowling had a 60% face-off percentage. Miller had a 53. 
So really nice to see the Vancouver Canucks face-offs actually going places and not always having to be Bo going out there winning draws because Petey, hey man, a 69% game is pretty nice if you ask me. So the Vancouver Canucks have won six in a row. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think? Again, I didn't watch this game, but I tried my best to go out there and give you a video that is worth the discussion. Go watch Spider-Man if you haven't already. And if you are planning to watch it and you haven't, do not go in the Vancouver Canucks Instagram because I've been seeing the comment section. Everybody is going in there and spoiling that movie for some reason. So yeah, if you're doing that, please stop. If you're very much interested in the property, then hey, don't go into Canucks Instagram. But talk to me in the comments. What do you think about this game in the comments of this video? I hope you enjoyed. This was your Ash Rolls and I and I. And bye.